Once again, we have the classic scenario. The stage is set. A smart man in a white lab coat with a doctor in front of his name tells us that he has discovered proof positive for what many other smart men in white lab coats hope to be true in order to make their own theories make sense. He tells us he's discovered that life can grow out of non-living chemicals. To those men looking to prove evolution, that's irrelevant. Because without chemical evolution, the rest of Darwin's evolutionary model unravels like a ball of string. According to evolutionary thought, all life, bacteria, fish, plants, animals, and men, originated from chemical compounds. This theory that life arose from non-living chemicals is called spontaneous generation. One of the fundamental laws of uh, biology is the law of biogenesis, that life comes only from pre-existing life. And of course, for a creationist, that's certainly no surprise. Life, God's life, created life to multiply after its kind. So that makes sense to a creationist. But to an evolutionist, there was a time in the past when there wasn't any life. And so chemicals somehow got together and made living things. And, and this is, uh, was often called a spontaneous generation. A few years ago, Stanley Miller did a, a famous experiment. He took some simple materials, uh, some methane, some ammonia, uh, some water vapor, uh, zots them with an electric spark to simulate lightning flashing back and forth in the atmosphere of the ancient Earth. And in just a week, he had amino acids, a building blocks of protein. And that was hailed as almost making life in a test tube. And that was one I used when I used to teach evolution. But I took a look at the rest of the evidence. And there are three problems with that brilliant experiment. One, he had the wrong starting materials. Uh, two, he used the wrong conditions. And three, he got the wrong results. Other than that, it was a brilliant experiment. Evolution teaches that energy, such as lightning or heat, plus matter, can occasionally create new life. Yet our entire food industry rests on the fact that this can never happen. If we examine a jar of peanut butter, it contains matter and is exposed to light and heat. But we never find new life inside unless an outside life contaminates it. The case for chemical evolution only weakens when we consider that long chains of specific amino acids, all in exactly the right position, are required to form the proteins of life. Information theory scientist Hubert Yockey calculated, and MIT biologist Robert Sauer confirmed, 
that the probability that a protein containing just 100 amino acids would form spontaneously is less than one chance in 10 to the 65th power. An event so improbable that it could be compared to winning the state lottery by finding the winning ticket in the street and then continuing to find the winning ticket in the street every week for a thousand years. Life can only be created by a supreme creator, God himself. Yeah, I can't get past the, the truth is, life can only come from life. Most people aren't aware of the fact that scientific experiments, like the Miller experiment, that have been the very basis of evolutionary science for years and years, have all one by one fallen like a house of cards.